you, thank you. That's very, very, very heartfelt and wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, let me um, first tell you a little bit about World Ventures Foundation. And I have a, a story that I, I remembered today when I was walking. So, um, bear with me while I do this. Um, World Ventures Foundation was not something that we thought of late in the career of this organization, World Ventures. It was something that the founders believed in from the day one. And so they said, what would matter if we traveled the world and we could have a global impact? And the foundation was born. They'd heard about volunteers. They believed in volunteers. And of course, now today we do volunteers, but we do so much more. But it's an important piece of who the heart of this organization is because we don't consume where we go, we leave it better than we found it. For example, yesterday, and we'll talk about this more, we did a service project. We do one at every event globally, wherever possible. And when you turn around and do a project and you leave a city better than you found it and you impact the children, that, you, that are here, regardless of their circumstances, that is an incredible gift that this organization just does right there. There's you know, no one else doing that around the world at the scale that we're doing this. And I am so proud to be leading that effort. But before I tell you about this <clears throat> bottle school project, this morning I had the privilege of walking along the beach early to just, you know, enjoy the incredible beauty of the Gold Coast. And I was reminded of the um, <clears throat> little story of the little boy with the, um, what are they called, those beautiful fish. Pardon? Starfish, thank you. So, <laughs> so of the starfish with the little boy, and I, I told myself the story reminded me while I was walking, and... Um, the story is uh, that he was on the beach, the starfish had been abandoned by the, by the ocean leaving, so the starfish were all along the sand, and the little boy was throwing them back in the water. And an adult, who had a different perspective on life, came by and said, why are you doing that? There's so many thousands. It just doesn't matter, it's wasteful, don't bother, it's too much, don't even worry. And the little boy picked up the next one and threw it into the water and said, but it really mattered to that one. And I want to, yes, and, and I was so grateful to remember it today on the beach. It was like just a gift. Um, why I'm telling you that is, if we all think about giving back in ever, any way we can in the world, and we look at the world, it's daunting. There's so much need, so much difficulty out there. that It feels, I know I was when I first started on changing my career from owning a company to being a nonprofit. But I started it, and I started it with the one. We can do something for one person. So everything we tell you today, I invite you to be the one, to make a difference. So... Let's move to Journey to 100. Um, we began, the organization took on Guatemala as a country of change in its early days. And um, Guatemala is a post-revolution country in Central America, 35 years after the revolution. And they have now passed the memory stage, and they're ready for education, but they're impoverished. But they are not, <coughs> excuse me, where they have no food, or they're beloved children, but they don't have schools. So we made a commitment to build schools there. And this year, we decided in honor of the 10th anniversary, we would complete the 100th school there. And that was going to be a one-year campaign to raise the money to build the final 28 schools that would get us to the 100. Well, it's an amazing audience across the world. We fully funded the 100 school by the end of January. Wow. 
And actually, the first school was funded in Australia. <laughs> and we're very grateful for that. And it set the tone of what was going to happen. So you were the, the first ones in. And um, uh, you know, now my job is to travel the world and collect everybody's pledges. But that's another story, you know. <laughs> so, but I, we, we're sharing this with you because ultimately we're going to have something in the APAC region that will replicate the similar program so that you can build teams and take them to a closer market to do repeated sustainable projects, and we should have that to present to you by the end of the year. So let's move on. So uh, we have a new video, which is a, uh, the 2015, and it's the, you know, what we've done in, it's kind of a review of 2015, so if, if you would like to see it, I'd like to play it for you. And it's available on YouTube, you don't have to Ask me for it. It's in the World Ventures Foundation YouTube channel. And if we could play that, then you'll see where we've been this last year, and we'll talk about next year. <laughs> Thank you. You all should be so really very proud, you know, because the, the, how we're structured is the operations of it, my salary, my team's salary, our space we're in, is funded through World Ventures Holdings. But all the money we raise from all the work we do for all the affiliates around the world is distributed to the affiliates. So it's a very, it's a spec from my point of view, from a nonprofit perspective, it's an incredible model because you know, you're helping support it through your membership. Uh, indirectly, a portion is obviously doing that. And that we're very grateful for, but it allows us the freedom to go work for the affiliates and bring you to those affiliates for volunteering. So um, it's, it's, I always say this, but you know, I still pinch myself every morning and go, really, I get to do this again? I get to entice you into these amazing experiences and be in a, you know, we represent what we think is a huge attraction for the model. So this year, I'm going to show you a few volunteers. We have the most volunteers ever in all markets, and we have them up as many as we can already 
on Dream Trips app, and we invite you to look at them. But I do want to tell you that I want you to really understand a volunteer is not a plug and play package that you just, you know, you get the hotel and a service excursion. A volunteer includes the cost of having the program. You know, you can't show up at a nonprofit who is in a third world impoverished country and just say, we're here. You've got to pay for the program materials. They don't have the resources. You've got to pay for the construction materials, whatever it takes. So the trips are very intensive, all food, all the transportation, because then these, the locations are not at the hotel. We have to usually leave and go out of town a bit. And we're there several days. So um, do be kind of conscious when you look at the pricing, and I'm not going to talk about pricing because I'm not a travel agent, but when you look at it online, be mindful that we're not doing apples to apples of a, of a package trip that you might have to Fiji, which we're about to see, but we're actually making a difference in an orphanage. We're building a building, and it costs money to do that, and we're doing it together. So just my, my little, so let's take a look at what we have this year, because I have a lot more to share with you. So we'll go straight from there. So Fiji, this is designed for you all. I don't think, you know, yet everybody here knows this. I'd like everybody to share this when they get on their Dream Trips app and make sure that you, you filter it by volunteers. It's up for booking, and um, it's, there's a, there are a couple of cute excursions involved, but it's, um, I'm going to go to the charity on Monday, and we'll take a look at it. But it looks like an amazing project to help an orphanage in central Fiji um, and I do hope you'll share it and get the group together because it, it was designed, as I say, with Australia in mind and that we would really like it to be the market that wants to go there and does this trip. Bali, last year, several people from Australia came. We, this is the same orphanage um, that we did in November and um, we're excited to be returning. Let's see where else. So there's Malaysia, we're going back to Kota Kunabalu, and we're working with the Lions Club there, and that's a really, really extraordinary opportunity to help the children there. Beijing, we work with a group called Hands-On Network, and we're going to be there um, yeah, those two dates. Um, let's look. Shanghai, Shenzhen. Again, these are all up on the, on the app. So you can see them, but um, they are, you know, specifically, hopefully, in your market for you to enjoy. Thailand, we have Blessed Homes. Um, that is a return. We go there. This is an orphanage for refugee children who were abandoned from Myanmar. And uh, Ule is a 28-year-old young man who has been there since he was 21 and rescued three children, and now he has 138, and we help him. And we, yes, so that's, and I've been there twice because I just, he is a beloved friend now, and um, uh, if you do a search for a TED Talk, Blessed Homes and Ule, you'll see his TED Talk, and it's really fun. He's an extraordinary young man. So, the other thing I want to tell you that Dave and Yvette are here, and they have agreed to host our, or to lead, not host, our Nepal volunteer in Kathmandu later this year. So they are booked. They are ready to go. There's eight spots left. If you want to spend a week with Dave and Yvette, hurry up, because uh, we haven't even announced it in the U.S. yet, and it's already disappearing. But that's, that's their trip that they've always dreamed of doing. Um, Dave tells me we're going to the Monkey Temple, and that was on his bucket list for 10 years. So he'll tell you more about He didn't even know where it was. He just is so glad he's, we, we, it was there. So we're going to have a great time. We're working with a school there in, in um, Nepal. It's important to know that there, these are thousand-year-old buildings that are destroyed. This is not a beachfront community that needs repairing. This is history has been devastated. So we'll go help build a, a school there from the ground up. So that's, um, do join us. Now, I would like to invite your now, this is Yvonne Sio. She's going to come join me now. Please welcome Yvonne. 
And Yvonne is our new director for APAC, and that is Asia and Australia for us. And she joined us a month ago, and we are so honored. She speaks Mandarin, which I am very grateful for, and uh, very good English, which I am doubly grateful for, because there's a lot of phone calls at night and stuff. Because, but she is an extraordinary gift to the foundation. <laughs> yes, and uh, we're very honored to have her. And she's going to be your local contact. She can get over here. It's not going to be like me once a year managing to get here. But uh, I think she'll be here a lot. So she's going to talk to you about, let me show you what she's going to talk about. Let's get local. And before she does that, say hello anyway before I cut you off with a video. Let me say hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Yvonne. I'm so happy to be here because everybody keeps telling me how big-hearted Aussies are. Is that true? Really? Sorry, I can't hear you? Yeah. True? That's exactly what I thought. You know, I've been in the foundation business for quite a while now. Uh, I was heading up a vision foundation, working out of this region, and I've worked with a lot of very fantastic Aussies. People like Fred Hollows, Brian Holden, you know, all these very big names. So I know that, you know, you have it in your blood to be very nice to the community. And yesterday was the first time, in fact, I worked with you guys because I've just started like a month ago. So, in fact, yesterday was the first time I was out there with some 70 of you. And my gosh, I mean, the transformation that you guys have done for the place is amazing, okay? So, who are the 70 that join us? Can I have you stand up, please? Can we give a round of applause to these people who sweated out, who got really dirty and hot? Thank you. Should we play the video? Yeah. Yes. So could we play the little recap video and we'll just see what they did yesterday. I'm Acting Sergeant Tracy Clouston from Queensland Police Service and I'm currently the Relieving Manager here at the PCYC. World Venture Foundation is giving us a makeover here today um, and doing our gardens, helping us spring clean and doing an amazing job of repainting our hall. It is important for World Ventures to be here because of the community spirit that's involved with this and to upgrade our club and to bring in more people within the community that can help uh, make it a better place. Okay, what a terrible way to be introduced, right? I mean, now you guys know that I can't spin the ball for nuts. Uh. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I really love the momentum that we have for the community. Yesterday, that job that we did really will help impact some 5,000 kids in the community. And in fact, we are hoping to extend this membership nationwide with PCYC. And since all of you are from all over Australia, our wish is for you to take this local, right? That's really three simple ways. IPC. Identify which centre of IPC you think you can have an impact. Plan it by getting the date, the time, how much volunteers you need, how much money you, you got to be, and really just get your teams going. And the third one is to create that magic moment for the kids and their community. Three simple steps. IPC. Identify, plan, and create. I'll be here for the next two days out in the booth. So anytime when you have some ideas of what you can do for your local IPCs, please come and have a talk with us. And lastly, <laughs> as you create the momentum for your business, I wish every one of you will create the momentum for your local communities. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. I'm so happy. All right, so now, um, uh, you know, it, <laughs> we had to wine and dine her for 10 months. It was quite a job anyway. She's, uh, she got sold. So um, we want to share with you somebody special to talk about their experience of being a volunteer because I can tell you my 
belief in what will happen by being a volunteer. But it's only from the heart of someone who lives and breathes it that I believe you can fully understand what that is. So please have me or help me. Oh, just quickly, before she's going to be all wound up. We did a Waves for Water campaign. That's our emergency relief. We sent 50 buckets of and filters to Fiji. The, it'll go up in the next couple of days, everything we've done there. It's the other island to Nandi, but um, we, they're there. The Ways for Water team got there. We have, that means there's 50 million gallons of clean water being provided by World Ventures Foundation. <laughs> so please have me welcome Nikki Gallagher. All right, so you have five minutes. Thank you, darling. Hi, everybody. How are we all today? Beautiful. Well, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes with you, just sharing with you my experience over the last 12 months being with World Ventures. So, first of all, who here has done a volunteer or a service day? Awesome, that's fantastic. Who here wants to do a volunteer or a service day? That's more like it, fantastic. Especially after the beautiful Gwyneth and Yvonne have just shared with you how amazing the foundation is. So my first experience with the foundation was doing the two service days here on the Gold Coast last year where we did a basket brigade, which is a charity that I've been volunteering with for the past eight years, where we pack and deliver Christmas hampers, uh, which we, I've been doing for the last eight years. And we did it here on the Gold Coast. And what we did is we fed 160 families that are struggling financially. And our beautiful members packed all the gorgeous food and delivered it off to, and they actually drove their cars and delivered it off to the families, which was amazing. I then went off and did the Bali volunteer to the orphanage that you saw up on the screen before, and that was just absolutely phenomenal. We helped the kids, and you know we did a massive renovation of um, one of the bedrooms, and it absolutely broke my heart seeing the condition of what these kids were sleeping in. Like the beds, I wouldn't even let my dog sleep on these beds, but there's kids sleeping on these beds, and. I said I wasn't going to cry, but I actually did when I went to Bali. Like, it absolutely broke my heart, but I then got this immense sense of joy knowing that we were buying beds for them and being able to replace some of these beds for these kids. And we renovated the classroom and knowing that these kids had somewhere to learn and to study when they came home from school and it was just it just gave me the biggest sense of joy and pride knowing that i was making a difference and yesterday like the video like who here had the best time yesterday I know a lot of you are a little bit exhausted. <laughs> Lou, especially, she's like, I haven't done that much work in like months. <laughs> but, you know, th just the joy that Tracy from PCYC is just so appreciative. Like, she's just so grateful to everybody. And the, the transformation, if you're on the WV Australia page, you'll be able to have a look on the Facebook page of the before and after photos. They are just phenomenal. It is just absolutely brilliant. So if you haven't done a volunteer before, but you really want to, as Dave was out here before the, this morning, you know, no excuses. You know, just we've all, we're all really busy in our lives. In the last three weeks, I've spent a week in hospital. I packed up a four-bedroom house. I've moved house. I flew up here. I organised a, you know, service day, you know, we all have exactly the same amount of time in our lives. But I made it happen. Because my priorities were this. What's your excuse? You know, I made it happen because I'm really passionate about the foundation. And, you know, I wake up every single morning. The first thing I do is I thank the universe that I'm alive. I've had six brain surgeries. And I'm grateful to be alive. And, you know... My mission, I'm, you know, I believe that I'm alive to give back to the universe. And this is, this is my calling.
Thank you. And I don't do it for the ego. I don't do it for the applause. But thank you. I do appreciate it. We all like to be thanked. I do it because I love it. I do it because it's my passion. And I do it because I love to give. And I love the act of giving. And I love the joy of seeing the joy on other people's faces when they receive my gift of love. So I want you to also feel that gift because it's beautiful. It really is. So do yourselves the gift of giving so that you too can feel that joy. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So extraordinary person. And uh, we're really grateful. And we have a little surprise. We get... So, Nikki Gallagher, Volunteer of the Year, Australia. Thank you so much. So here's her. Let me take your, and here's your bouquet. <laughs> Does anybody deserve it more? No, no. Let's get a picture, and then she told her own story why we had to give it to her, didn't she? So we just take quick pictures, and then we're... Thank you. Thank you, everybody. What a great audience, and thank you for sharing with us. See you at the booth. <laughs>